Hi! Today I'd like to do a demo showing you how to do a customized checkout template using FoxyCart and FoxyShop. This site is Chameleon Chili Sauce and it's developed by a guy named Mike Imkin who is letting me come in here and um, build this checkout template using his website. So um, first we're going to go over here and buy some sauce. I'll show you what it looks like now. Ah, oh, this looks pretty good. We'll add this to our cart and do the checkout. And you see we've got the standard Foxy Cart checkout with our um, just the, the standard layout. But we'd like it to look like the rest of the site. So um, let's just go through the process on how to do that. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is build a checkout page that we can cache as a template. So let's go ahead and add a new page call the checkout and we'll set up our uh, permalink to be checkout template so somebody doesn't stumble on this page by accident and then normally what I like to do for these pages is to build a um, a customized um, uh, uh, pay WordPress page itself, but this site is designed in Genesis, and Genesis isn't super friendly with building customized checkout templates. So we'll do all of this in our our actual HTML page. So we're going to put in the Foxy Cart templates, which it looks like this. These are just going to tell Foxy Cart to show the actual uh, pages themselves, the actual um, uh, cart and the checkout itself. And then we're also going to need to come up with um, some CSS code. So let's look at what is in here right now in our checkout. And if we look through here, we can see in the checkout template we've got this style sheet right here and this is the one we're after and it looks like there's also some other customizations that's going on in here so let's just go ahead and copy all this customization into our page and technically this should be up in the head but we're not really going to worry about that because that'll be alright so what we've got here is our style sheet this is going to pull in the standard Foxy Cart style sheet. Then we've got our, uh, looks like we've got a, uh, the cancel. We're doing some special stuff with the cancel link, the continue shopping link, and we're making the um, phone number uh, mandatory. And I think there's also a little more customization on here. We're also requiring uh, terms of service check off. Hmm. So let's go ahead and copy all this stuff. So we're going to put all of this in our checkout page. These are the most important things. This stuff and this, this part right here. So this is going to bring in all of the checkout styles all the the actual styles for the checkout this element and all these elements and normally if you have a page that has a white background this looks really nice to put inside of the actual page background if you have a page that's not a white background that's more of a um, some other design. You may want to go with Foxy Cart's uh, text-only template, and to get that, you just check this radio box right here, and then copy the um, CSS include that it'll give you. And I believe it's just themes slash text slash styles dot CSS. And what that does is that uh, gives you the cart and then the checkout below it without the two columns side by side. So now we have our page. Um, you pr don't really want a sidebar. It looks like in Genesis we might be able to get rid of the sidebar by clicking this uh, this layout right here to go full width. 
and let's go ahead and publish this page. Okay, and it looks like that did that right. Now the next thing we want to do is go into Foxy Shop and hide the skip the Foxy Cart includes on our checkout template page. So we're because we don't want to have those the Foxy Cart includes uh, show up on that page, and it'll automatically take jQuery out. If the Foxy Cart includes are included on that page, that'll kind of mess up what Foxy Cart's trying to do on the checkout and can cause a lot of problems. So now we've loaded that in. Let's go ahead and have a look at our checkout template page and see how it looks. Um, let's be on page two here. Nope. There it is, check out. So, open it up. And it looks good. Everything looks good. Looks like our checkout will look nice. We don't exactly want the uh, these elements here. And maybe we'll just take them out using CSS. But let's go ahead and give this a shot and see how it looks. So, we're going to go over here. You can do this in Foxy Cart too. You can do the caching, but by putting your URL right here and clicking cache. But it, that's a two-step process. This is a little quicker and a little easier. So let's just put our URL in here. Uh, we'll just copy this right here. And we'll say update checkout cache. Okay, now it's cached. And let's try it out and see how it looks. We'll look at our cart and click checkout. All right, so we have a few issues we have to deal with, but this looks pretty good. It's got all our information. Let's turn on Firebug and see if we have any errors. We don't have any JavaScript errors, so we're looking good in that way. Um, now we have this white border around the outside. So let's see what's causing that. Usually, yeah, see, we're going to have to set our page padding, to our body padding to zero. So we'll go over here to our checkout page. We're going to look at the CSS here and say body padding is zero. And what else do we need? We probably want to get rid of this. So we'll take H1 with that class and hide that. H1. And let's look at our breadcrumbs too. We don't really want those. So let's go ahead and take those out. And if we just display that none, and we display that none, it's looking pretty good. Still got a little bit of that's a little bit um a lot of padding up at the top there. Looks like there's an extra paragraph. It's going to be a little tough to get rid of. Um, that might be showing up. Hmm. Usually you can get rid of these um, pretty easily if you can do your own template. Uh, I think because it's coming in, um, it, it's parsing this entire page, that's um, it's kind of messing that up a little bit. It's, it's parsing this and throwing some HTML in there. But what we can do is we could probably take this entry content and give it a margin top of minus 20 pixels. And that looks like that might do the trick. And see, it doesn't mess up our drop downs, so we're okay. 
So let's just do minus 60 for dot entry dash content. This is almost like doing inline CSS. It's just really not the way to go. But this is what we're doing to get our checkout template. So that looks good. Go ahead and update. And let's go recache. Okay. So our body um, CSS didn't take. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. A lot of this is trial and error. A little bit of just figuring things out as you go along. Body. Hmm. Well, it looks right. Maybe we'll say uh, body dot full with content. And we'll just throw an important on there. And let's go ahead and cache this again. Now the other thing that we're going to have to look at is if you look up here you see that um, our, we are not secure, which in Firefox isn't that big of a deal. In Chrome it's going to throw some errors and make more of a fuss. The problem is that some of our, if we look at our um, page info here, you can see that some of the uh, the connection is partially encrypted. There are some HTTP elements on this page. Let's go ahead and see if that... Hmm, it still didn't take. I'll have to look at why that's why that's happening. Um, let's just look at our CSS here. Let's see. Um, aha! Here's what's going on. We've got this extra paragraph tag that's right throwing itself in the middle there. That's why you don't really want to work in this editor. There we go. That ought to take care of that. Up update our checkout. Okay, so we have to figure out what the element that's being served over regular HTTP is th that's keeping it from being totally secure here. There we go. Now we have our nice border padding working. And we go to net over here in Firebug and let's look for something that's an HTTP protocol. Everything's HTTPS except for themes.googleusercontent and themes.googleusercontent. Aha, that looks like a font. So, let's look at our page and see how we're doing Google if we're using Google Fonts. Now, Google Fonts are good because we can um, we can usually um, do HTTPS with Google Fonts. If you're using an, a regular f special font, that's going to cause some problems. Um, and you may need to look at moving to, s to I believe WebKit font can be um, um, served over secure SSL. Let's have a look at our theme and see if we can't Let's look at our style sheet here and see if we're pulling in some... Aha! Let's try... Let's see if this works. Yep. Looks 
like that will work. So let's go ahead and make that HTTPS, update our file, and let's recache, see if that fixes that problem. And look at that. Now we're totally secure. Verified by Digicert. And took care of that problem. So there's no more HTTP. You see those um, Google Elements are all HTTPS now. So, but we, our fonts aren't quite working. So that's something we'll have to look at. Um, yeah, okay, we'll look at that a little more. Uh, what we may have to do is on the checkout make these a little bit smaller and make the fonts just look a little bit different so they don't scoot down to the next line or figure that out. Um, yeah, so that's that issue. Um, secondly, and then the, the only other thing that you might want to look into is looking at your um, fav icon. Uh, fav icons do not have to be served over SSL, so what you'll want to do is make sure that you have uh, an HTTP, that, that your header file is linking your fav icon specifically. Rather than just letting it be there, you'll want to uh, actually make sure that it's, that it is uh, specifically there. So if we go over here to products, look at our page source and look for the fav icon you can see it's right here it is specifically being um, being called out right here and that's the way you want to do it you can put it in your your root folder but you just want to make sure to specifically mention it here with the, some code like this and then uh, you'll get the fav icon is showing up in your checkout up like this. And that way when you're on your checkout screen you don't have a different fav icon that makes it seem like it's a different site. So these are a few um, a few tips to make sure that your um, checkout looks nice and smooth and looks like the rest of your site. Uh, hopefully this is helpful and um, uh, if you do have questions, let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to, to answer questions, so uh, let me know. Thanks. Bye-bye. P.S. There's just a couple things I wanted to mention. I did figure out what the issue was with the style sheet. Uh, when you went to that import URL, it gave this code. So I just copied this code directly and I put it into the theme instead of that import URL I just put this in directly and then it just worked. Uh, I think that because it was a third-party import that Foxycart was having a hard time um, importing that directly. It couldn't cache this file. So that's that issue. Uh, you can now see our checkout looks correct with the, uh, the proper fonts there. The other thing is on this checkout page, um, since we did load in all this code, if we accidentally opened it up in the uh, WYSIWYG editor, it's going to look, it's going to possibly mess up a lot of things and cause a lot of problems. So we want to leave it in HTML. There's a great plugin for doing that called Always HTML, which I've added and it make it adds this little box down here where you can just check the always edit in HTML box and now you can't accidentally put it in WYSIWYG mode, you can't open it up that way. So that'll protect you from messing it up. If you have other code in other pages that viewing it in the ed in the visual editor messes it up, this is a great way to protect that code. So that's uh that's just a couple of things about this particular project that I did just at the end and um to uh, uh, get it finished out.